How one fan's hate of Hollywood Brown turned into love. When Ravens running backs get healthy next year, are they still going to be as pass heavy? Why Ravens need to run the no huddle offense a lot more? These and many, many more questions on this episode of NFL Questions from subscribers. Yeah, this feels like a dream. YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL questions from subscribers. A series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to, and we answer it in a video just like this. If you want to be part of it, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Shout out to y'all because everybody has been sending it to the right email. Thank you. Or for the patrons, you know, y'all can send it directly on Patreon. Team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Let's get into it. First question came from my boy Martin. He said, and, and appreciate you being a patron, Martin. He said, for the longest time, I have been a Marquise Brown hater. I never liked to pick when Ravens drafted him, and I hated last year how Ravens media hyped him up for a breakout season when I knew it wasn't going to happen. But I tell you, I am happy to eat my own words. And for Marquise Brown to be doing his thing and making a claim to be an elite wide receiver, I've gone from hater to fan. Also, it might just be that number five magic. Shout out to Joe Flacco and Marquise Brown. Hey, man, I um, I appreciate how straight up you are with this. I, I, I sincerely appreciate your honesty because it takes a lot uh, to be willing to admit that, like that you were a hater of, of somebody or a player or whatever it may be. I appreciate that because you ain't had to let us know. You could have been hating in silence, or if you was hating in the comment section or hating on Twitter or whatever, you could have quietly changed your tune without anybody really noticing, without anybody even knowing. But the fact that you you brought it up, four questions from subscribers, you you brought it up. I, I appreciate that, for real. And because um, I know there are a lot of people that uh, that still hate on Hollywood. And that's fine. I mean, it, it is what it is. I just... One thing that I never got, I, I, I don't understand how somebody could just really hate on a player. Like, like I just, if you don't, if you didn't like the pick, okay. If you don't, don't think they're the best player in the world, but to actually just really just sit there and, and just hate. I, it's, it's crazy because cause hate, with hate, you got to go to extremes for that. You really got to go to extremes to, to, to be a hater of a player or something like that. If you don't like the player, okay, cool. You don't like their style. You don't like how they do this, how they do that. All right, cool, whatever. No, no big deal. But to actually hate is it, it's just crazy, man. So kudos to you, man. <laughs> Speaking of hate, next question came from our boy Dana. He said, engraving, team keep it clean, family, what's good? See if you can guess these two players and their stats. No cheating. They were both, or they both wore the number 57 for the Baltimore Ravens and... The Baltimore Jets. <laughs> he said CJ Mosley and Bart Scott. All right. Now, match them to their stats. Player A, 729 tackles, 25 sacks, four interceptions, six forced fumbles, and one Pro Bowl. Mm, okay. Player B, 634 tackles, nine and a half sacks, 10 interceptions, six forced fumbles, three defensive touchdowns, and four Pro Bowls. Oh. Four. Mm. All right, so 729 tackles, 25 sacks, four interceptions, 634 tackles. Well, since Blair A has 729 tackles, I'm going to assume that's Bart Scott because he played 11 years. only reason I know he played 11 years was because he just said it in all of his hate for Hollywood. He would just say, oh, you, you wouldn't touch me in 11 years in the league. People know who I am. Go look at my, go look at my posters on the wall uh, over there on his meals. Go look. But anyway, uh, so I'm going to go with player A is, uh, is Bart and player B is CJ. Let's scroll down and answer. He said, uh, so answer, CJ Mosley, okay, it is right. So CJ Mosley is player B. Uh, he's been playing for seven years, and stats are way better than Bart Scott, player A, who played for 11 years. Bart wasn't even the best 50. <laughs> he said Bart wasn't even the best 57 on either of his two teams. He has no room to talk trash to any players. Drops Mike, LOL. Man, that whole Bart Scott thing was crazy because with Bart Scott, with his whole thing with Hollywood, it's funny because I know my guy Raven C pointed it out and some other people pointed it out too. They were like, man, this dude, like, he's saying he Ravens this, he Ravens that. Oh, yeah, go up to the go, go upstairs where they keep the real awards at and the trophies and the pictures, not just the player of the week. They get those out to everybody just to make you feel good. And da -da -da -da. He's saying all this stuff about Ravens this, Ravens that. Oh, you already know who I am. 
I, I, I'm, I'm a legend. I, I, I got it, man. But then you look in the background, and there's pictures of him when he was with the Jets. It's like, what? You, you saying all this Ravens stuff? And, you, and, the, and the thing about it, too, is that you prepared for this segment. So you knew you were going to be saying stuff about Hollywood and the Ravens and all that, but you still, you, you could have switched them out. He'd be like, oh, you, you know what? You know what let, let me get some of those pictures. Or maybe, maybe it's because all of those pictures, maybe because the Ravens got all those pictures. Maybe that's why he ain't put those pictures up in the background. That's probably it. Next question came from Laura Shaquan. She said, good morning, Engraven. Hope everything is well on that side with you and the family. But I just have a question about the Ravens offense. I watched all the Ravens games this year from first quarter to the end of the game. Then I watched the Chargers game versus the Seahawks. And I was thinking to myself, the Chargers ran about five to ten wide receiver and running back screen plays. And I was thinking to myself that the Ravens have not ran one wide receiver or running back screen play this year. I think if the Ravens put that in the playbook, it will open up the offense. What do you think? Oh, oh, oh you, oh, you, you, you must be new here because this is something that we've been screaming for, for the Ravens to incorporate the screen game. Now they have actually run not uh, not any running back screens, but they have ran some wide receiver screens this year, but not many. It's just something that the Ravens don't do. I don't know why they 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 when they do run one, they they run like one a month. They ran one in September, October, we didn't get one yet. So it could happen in a Chargers game. It could happen, but don't count on it being that many. Next question came from my boy, William J. He said, what's up, Engraven? This is not a question, but simply an observation. I was watching Keyshawn Johnson, J. Will, and Max show, and they had a phone interview with one David Kaplan, and he says, Lamar Jackson is not considered in the MVP talks until he can pass in the pocket, in the playoffs, in one of these elite teams' home field, <laughs> throwing from the pocket. Can he pick apart defenses in that setting? <laughs> Shaking my head, Engraven. You are absolutely right. The goalposts will continue to be moved anyway. That's my spiel check. That interview uh, out for yourself. Let me know what you think. Be well, bro. <laughs> that ain't even no surprise that somebody would say that. Because, again, with, with Lamar, people, they don't want to be wrong. And, and it's crazy. You know one thing that I've noticed big time? With Lamar Jackson, um, if he has a bad game, he has a bad game, especially if Ravens lose. Because um, it's one thing if you have a bad game and Ravens win, but if you have a bad game and Ravens lose especially, um, boy, them, them haters, they, they, they come out out of the shadows. They come out of the woodwork. Hey, Lamar Jackson, oh, that guy sucks. He's terrible. But he having all these good games, doing his thing, passing for all these yards, and then I don't see nobody. I, I I don't see my I don't see the, the 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 normal Lamar Jackson haters in the comment section. They MIA. They like, oh. But I know they waiting. I know they waiting because a lot of them they they go with these goalposts. They move with these goalposts. And it's it, it's it's sad that people again they just don't want to give credit where credit is due. It's always got to be oh, but it's it was, it's because of this. It's only because of this. That that's it. That's it. Like with the Colts, the Colts game. Oh, Lamar only did that when Colts, they were down to their second, third string wide uh, cornerbacks. I mean, excuse me. Because of that. For the Denver game, I didn't hear anything. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't hear anything for that one. Like they, 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 like, they didn't come up with anything for that one. And I, I was trying to think, well, what are they going to say? But they, they, they came up with nothing. Against the Lions. Um... Oh, it's the Lions. It's the Lions. And, but a, a lot of yards and points were dropped on that field against the Lions. Um, then against the Chiefs. But, oh, it's the Chiefs. They're so bad. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's always... Well, actually, it's not always going to be something. Because, again, like I said, recently, they've been quiet. They've been hushed. I've been looking at well, they, where, where they at. I don't see them. But... I know why. Next question came from my guy, Silver Fox. He said, Engraven, keep doing what you're doing, man. I enjoy your videos. I'd love to know who your contact is on the inside. You seem to break all the Ravens news first. No, I don't know about all that. Uh, but he said, I'm writing to give you kudos on your earlier call that you felt one Devontae Cornelius Freeman would be the best of the three vet running backs that we acquired. Uh, when that man runs, he usually gets the kind of yards we Ravens fans are used to seeing uh, with the likes of Gus DeBus. Hmm, really? And Freeman has most certainly been the best running back catching passes from Lamar out of the backfield and getting significant yardage after the catch. And as you say, we out. Appreciate it, uh, Fox. Um, with, with Devontae, I did feel like he was going to be the best fit. Uh, but he, um, 
I don't know. He, as far as running, he did get one nice pop. I think on his first carry. What game was that? Was that week two? I forgot what week it was. Um, but other than that, Gibby hasn't been doing much. I mean, I know in the last game though. I know uh, that that recency will be like, oh yeah, Devontae's doing it, which he did do his thing with when the pass catching game toward the end of the game. People, they they were all defending that deep ball. Lamar was like, oh, hold up. Last year, I would try to play hero ball, and I would force it sometime. But this year, I'm taking a check now. Devontae Freeman, there you go. Freeman caught it, yak, and, and even when un, under contact, he would fall forward too. I was like, okay, Devontae. That's exactly what we needed because it was allowing him to get more and more yards. Um, but as, as far as a runner, not a pass catcher, but a, a running back, um, no, I don't really think he's he's really done much of anything, though. Um, not, none of the running backs really have. Uh, Latavius Murray has been, like I said, a three, four yards guy. He'll, he'll get the touchdown, like uh, he'll get the touchdown close, but in the, in the red zone and whatnot. Um, but none of our none of our running backs have really stood out to me. Uh, so we'll see what happens moving forward. But uh, we're still waiting on something. Next question came from my guy Elijah. He said, "I had the Ravens going eight and two in our first ten games, leading up to the division rivalry schedule with the lovely addition of the Packers. Since I've been perfect this season, I'm crossing fingers that I'm wrong this week." Which leads me to my two-part question: Do you think this game against the Chargers can decide whether we play in SoFi or MNT Bank for the playoffs? Uh, we both know the goal is uh, SoFi in February. Um, it could, but I. It's so early. Like both of the teams are four and one. Obviously, if they finish with the same record, then yeah, it would, it could possibly determine whether one of them got a home field advantage or, or not. But I, I just mm, no. For me, I think not that it's too early to be thinking like that. But it's just it's too much that can happen through through now and the end of the regular season. Uh, he said, number two, do you think the NFL purposely made our December schedule crazy because they want Lamar winning streak to stop? We haven't lost a game in December since the Chiefs in overtime in his rookie year. Really? They haven't? Really? Man, I'm trying to think now. If, if that's the case, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. But anyway, no, I don't think the NFL purposely made the, the December schedule crazy, but they, the, whole, the whole schedule is crazy. Like there's like the Ravens schedule is very very tough. It's, it's hard. It's very very crazy. So it's crazy in September, as we've seen. It's crazy in October, even though they at the crib. It's crazy in over. It's crazy in this. It's crazy the entire year. So no. Next question came from my guy Manuel. He said, "What's up, Engraven? Shout out from Mexico. Many people want to see Bateman kill the opposing defense on the field, myself included. But after watching these five weeks, I want more Prochet because he is our Bateman on the field. What?" He has been catching balls and never letting it drop. Uh, cough. Steelers wide receivers last year. Cough. Uh, even if Bateman is healthy, G. Rowe said he is not going to play all game, and we must understand they don't want another Perryman situation. So in the meantime, we got Sticky Hands Prochet on the field making those tough catches. Um, so, yeah, I mean, Prochet is still going to get his playing time in. Um, and, and that, to me, was proven when Sammy Watkins went down. Uh, and especially if he's not a go against the Chargers, which, ooh, that would be scary. Uh, but if he's not a go against the Chargers, then Prochet will definitely get his playing time. But Bateman, he'll be sprinkled in there as well. But when, um, oh, back to what I was what I was talking about. When Sammy Watkins went down, I, I thought that Miles Boykin, I'd be like, okay, Miles Boykin time. But Ravens like, nope, we're still going with Hollywood. We're going with Duvernay. We're going with Prochet. Um, so Prochet's still going to get his when Bateman. But eventually Bateman's going to be getting more than Prochet. Um, so it's only a matter of time because you, you don't, your, your fifth round pick from what last year oh what was he fifth or sixth i forget but anyway a low round pick from last year is not going to be getting more playing time than a first round pick from this year at the same position all right and he said now to my other question do you think boykin has resolved his mental issues so that he can perform better in the passing game because he would be a bigger bolden if he has we won't know till we know because we haven't seen him on offense so there's no way to tell that until we actually see him out there uh, consistently. Next question came from Tyrone. He said, hey, Graven, hope all is well with you and the fam. Love the channel and shout out to Team Keep It Clean. Yeah, shout out to those guys. They pretty good. Uh, he said, I have a concern about the Ravens offense for next year. We all know that our passing offense this year has been great. And Lamar has been airing it out for the past couple of weeks. I feel that this is only due to the fact that two of our starting running backs are out for the season. And the running backs we have uh, really haven't been that effective. Uh, this has forced Greg Roman to change up his play calls and let Lamar throw way more than he has in the past. I, I feel that this has been a blessing in disguise because I felt like the Ravens never let Lamar throw the ball. 
and see what he can actually do out there. We have always uh, we have always been lost whenever our running game wasn't on point. That's true. Uh, as a result, he's been leading our team to victories and has been breaking uh, passing records. Des Bryant took shots at Greg Roman last year and put up videos on Instagram to back up Lamar and his passing ability to show that he can throw any route. My question is, when we get our running backs healthy, how is the offense going to look? Are we still going to be more run heavy or is it going to be more balanced? Uh, we are winning games because of Lamar's playmaking ability in the passing game, but there needs to be a balance next year with our running game. I'm worried we'll go back to our old ways and habits. And P.S. You can't call Devin, Devin Duvernay a jet sweep king anymore. He's catching passes now. <laughs> hey, you ain't lying, Tyrone. Uh, <laughs> you right, man. You right. He ain't been jet sweep king this year. So I I love it. Uh, you you a thousand percent right, man. Um, so shout out to Giro and them, TT and Kiki and them. Um, <clears throat> But anyway, with uh, when when th when them boys come back next year, Gus, J.K., I still, I mean, I, even when when they were here, I, I don't think it was it was gonna be like this, uh, the passing game. But I think it was definitely an expectation that the passing game was gonna get upped a lot this year, uh, because they had been talking about Gus had been talking about it, J.K. had been talking about it that they had been working on catching more passes out of the backfield this year. Um, they added Rashad Bateman, they added Tylen Wallace, they added T.T. and Kiki and them. So it's like. When, when when you do all of that, then you, you're showing like, hey, yeah, we we really we about to pass this ball this year. But I didn't again. I didn't think it was going to be like this on this level. But I think, like you said, with the running game in the shape that it's been in, which is not a good shape, uh, it's forced the Ravens. I right, we got to throw this thing, and it's shown like, hey, yeah, oh yeah, Lamar can do this. Should have known Lamar can do this already, but Lamar can do this. So and he's shown that in the past too, um, but uh, uh, he hasn't been able to show it consistently. He didn't let him do it consistently. So he, we, we know he could throw the ball. This ain't no surprise that he could throw the ball. Uh, but it's just been a nice thing that uh, to see the Ravens. That's the biggest thing, like you said, the Ravens when the running game had been stopped, they look, they look lost. Excuse me, they look lost. They're like, oh, what, well, what do we do? We can't run. But now. Even though they, they can't run, but they, they have found their way. Speaking of offense, next question came from my guy Seth. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope everything is well for yourself and your family. My family is upset since we're from southern Indiana, and it's mostly Colts fans. LOL, but I'm chilling. Uh, quick, simple question. Just wanted to hear your thoughts. On the last drive, it was mostly hurry-up offense except for the play after the Colts called a timeout. Would it be realistic to think if we incorporate this more, we would be in better shape later in the game? Our reason being is, correct me if I'm wrong, but Lamar was 6-for-6 six six around 54 yards in a game-winning touchdown. He also rushed twice for around 18 yards. Pretty efficient. What are your thoughts? Be safe and take it easy. Um, appreciate that, Seth. So, yeah, the, the, the hurry-up offense, that's also something that uh, we've been hoping the Ravens would incorporate a little bit more. Now, with hurry-up offense, it's not one of those things you can do every single drive. Because, say, for instance, you go three and out and you go and hurry up. So you, you're going to make your defense that much more tired. So it's one of those things that you got to do with not necessarily balance, but you, it just got to be right, man. It can't be every single drive. But to incorporate it sometimes, especially if in the flow of things, it's working and whatnot, you're moving, you're grooving, you're wheeling and dealing, and you're going down the field. Oh, yeah. It, it could certainly be something that, that, that up typical of offense, you keep the defense off balance, the defense can't make substitutions. And if you got a mismatch, then you can keep taking advantage of that mismatch. So that would be on, uh, I think that a lot of that would be on Lamar to recognize too. So if he sees a mismatch with the defense, all right, bring your boys back to the line of scrimmage that much faster. Get them lined up that much quicker uh, so y'all can keep this thing going. This question came from my guy, Eddie. He said, what's up, Engraven? Just want to say much love from the UK. Oh, shout out to the UK. He said, from the UK flock. Yes, we're international to yourself and family and keep up the great work you've been doing, especially in promoting positivity in a world that can often be quite toxic, especially now. Yes, it can be. You ain't lying. He said, but I digress. Uh, it's something that's been eating up for me, uh, eating up at me for a while with such a crowded room uh, at receiver. The old age dilemma, which you have covered extensively since the end of last season. What do we do with Miles Boykin? Uh, clearly, the man is very talented. However, the flashes that we've seen from both Devin Duvernay and Prochet have warranted, warranted them more snaps and playing time at the wide receiver position, albeit as fourth and fifth options, especially now since Bateman is about to return and you have Sammy Watkins in the picture, too. It's quite clear to me that he has not he has not been a miss 
uh, as far as the receiving has been concerned, but adds significant value in terms of the skill set uh, as a down the field blocker and as a possible red zone threat. Mm. And I hate that 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 you have to say possible there because he just simply isn't used in the red zone. But anyway, my main point is that with his skill set and a couple of extra pounds on him, would it not be worthwhile converting him to tight end like we did Waller all those years ago? Sure, he may be undersized by about an inch or two, but six feet four isn't exactly short. Potentially in doing so, he could get more game time, especially if we reintroduce those three tight end sets. But that's just my take. Much love again. Um, See, the the thing with that, I appreciate that, Eddie. Um, The thing with that with Miles Boykin and the whole tight end conversation um, is let's... uh, Let's see him as a wide receiver. Let's get his confidence up as a wide receiver. Let's give him that boost of confidence as a wide receiver before just switching him to tight end. Because you, I, I just feel like with, with, with Boykin, um, and not that if you switch him to a tight end now, it'd be like, oh, man, uh, his confidence will be all low or anything like that. But, again, the, the, the mental part. And I, I just the same, the same thing I keep saying with, with Boykin, if um, – let, let's just I, I want to see him get opportunities as a wide receiver first, man. I, I really want to see him uh, see his mature, m- maturation with um, with with Keith Williams and T. Martin first. See the type of impact that they've had on him, because we see the impact that they've had on all these other wide receivers with the Ravens. We see it. So I would like to see it as a wide receiver with Miles Boykin first before you just all right, tight end to tight end you go. So let, let's see that, and then we revisit the tight end conversation again. Next question came from my guy, Lord Veli. He said, what's going on to America's team? I call it that because in the world we live in today, we are faced with so many obstacles and setbacks and been told what you can't do. And the Ravens are a great representation of perseverance and fight and belief and leaning on your family to get through. Other than that, that boy, what a game. Sheesh. It was very disgusting in the first half. I saw poor execution and lack of heart. But hey, uh, we, we played anyway. I watched the stream the whole game, and yes, you called this the screen, but even so, why are grown men safeties over pursuing ball carriers? Like, I'm sick of it, seriously. Then you pursuing sloppy. Uh, next thing, Queen, really playing like a princess this year. Might need Harrison to take his spot. Uh, one game check himself, uh, don't want to be a Jalen Smith. Ooh, yikes. Ooh, you a boy. Uh, tackling period is awful this year and needs to be uh, felt with immediately. Upcoming, we got uh, Eckler, we got Williams. Allen, uh, then we got Cook, Jefferson, and Thielen. Oh, man, I didn't even think about the Vikings. Yes. Then Mixon and Chase. Oh, my goodness. Mm. I, didn't even, I hadn't even been really thinking that far down and, 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 and thinking about the tackling when it's come to those games that the Ravens got coming up. That's scary. Uh, these are star threats uh, with better defenses as well. So, Averitt, buddy, forget uh, getting beat. I need you to never, ever have a performance like that again. Uh, two yards, all you get off the receiver, bro. I know people got bad days at work, but OMG. Uh, all right, then second half, the comeback story, greatness. All I got to say, now that the record is gone, I would actually rather see Lamar throw 40 times a game and get, get 350 to 400 yards and see everyone touch the ball, literally. Um, that was beautiful. Looked like the old 2007 Colts. And Boykin and Bateman, Boyle, Gus, JK didn't even touch it. Uh, I think we will succeed in a no-huddle pistol shotgun offense Rush yards will be easy to get, too. Plus, the pocket breakdown, rush yards will be scary. Uh, and last thing, I think Lamar should wear a glove on, on his offhand to prevent his fumbles. Wish they found the emails week one. Flock Nation, I'm out. <laughs> he talking about it with, with John Gruden. <laughs> so the Ravens could possibly be undefeated. Um, man, yeah, this was, uh, this was a lot. But, yeah, you made some really good points to tackle him. Definitely has been terrible, and with those games we got coming up, yeah, they better fix it fast. Um, with Averitt, yeah, he had a bad game, uh, but the, the yeah, the challenge is, is gets a lot tougher this week. Uh, we Mike Williams, Keenan Allen, ooh, <laughs> ooh, uh, yeah. So, um, and then with the uh, he said you want to see Lamar throw forty times a game. I think I, I can't say that. Uh, it, situational football, man. Situational football. It all just depends on everything. Uh, now, obviously, Lamar is going to be throwing more, especially with the run game in the condition that it is in. Uh, but it, it just all depends on how the game is is flowing. Uh, and yeah, the, the 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 offense was looking good though. And then he said, and Boykin and Bateman and Boyle, they ain't even touched the ball. And of course, Justin Gus and J.K. because they out. Um, but yeah, when we getting them boys back, I mean, we got Boykin back. Uh, but boy, uh, Bateman on his way back too. All them bees just 
just like a tongue twister. But yeah, he on his way back too. So they getting healthier like at the perfect time. And the last question on this episode, a question from subscribers came from my boy Flirt Nowinski. He said, it's your boy back again. How are you and yours? How's your heart? Are you still on life support like the rest of us? LOL. Yeah, that was crazy games as usual now. Uh, first question is something that I've noticed that really scares me a lot. Literally every play, you know how they say, oh, man, Lamar's going to get hurt running around, blah, blah, blah. But my fear is sitting in the pocket, which history doesn't lie. Look at every mobile quarterback. They got hurt sitting in the pocket too long. Do you think Lamar is trying too hard to prove everybody wrong instead of playing his game? Mm. That's a good, uh, that's a really good question. Because uh, he, he does stay back there. He'll stay back there. And he will deliver a throw like, even you look at his last two, well, not the overtime throw, uh, but the, uh, the, the other, the two of the last three touchdown throws to Hollywood, the, the deep, deep throws. The one in the Broncos game. And the one in the Colts game, the deep throws. Uh, he sat there in the pocket, waited, waited, and, and, and threw it. Perfect throw, obviously. Hit Hollywood and stride, touchdown. Uh, but he took some hits on both of those throws right in the pocket. Um, and But with Lamar, it's like it's one of those things where I, I think with uh, the way that he's playing, I do think that there's something going on to where he may be a little banged up, just a little bit. And like, man, because because, yeah, I, earlier during the game, some people were like, oh, man, Lamar looks like he's a little bit slower. So then I was like, uh, let, let, let's keep watching. Let's 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 keep seeing. So now I watch him run. And yeah, he did look a little bit slower. Um, So and I don't know if that was him overthinking or just that he was just slower. And I think it was more so the latter. Um, But maybe he is a, a little bit. He's ailing a little bit because he, he been he been getting beat up back there. He been getting beat up like like all season, man. Except for the Chiefs game, they they kept him pretty clean in that one. But other than that, he been getting beat up all season. Um, so hopefully, uh, I, so I don't I don't even think it's him necessarily trying to uh, prove everybody wrong about the passing. Um, I just think he may be just hurting a little bit. And he said last night, the play before he missed Hollywood in the end zone, he went through his reads almost three times, then checked it down to the running back that dropped the. <laughs> <laughs> but he had a clear path to the end zone. Like, literally nobody was over there uh, to the right side, like, within at least 10 yards. I was losing my mind in the stands, <laughs> LOL. That's what makes me think maybe sometimes he's sitting in there too long, and, you know, that's when the wicked things happen. Also, a statement every a statement every with the bad game by or every every bad game by Anthony Avery. I believe that's what he needed, as always. I go back to the times when it was Jimmy Smith on the left and Hump on the right getting picked on. You only get better with reps. Oof. I love that. I I, I love that, and I, I really appreciate that. Um, because, yeah, it's true. Like, with Anthony Averitt now, with especially this this game got, they got coming up uh, in a couple of days, um, he, he can only go up from here. 